2D VTubers are completely reliant on an app called VBridger, which enhances your model tracking. But lately, there's been more and more talk about an alternative to VBridger, and what few people know is that there already is one. It's just not talked about nearly enough and is criminally underrated, in my humble opinion. It's called Vitamins, and I've personally swapped to it completely for my current model, and I haven't looked back in the year and a half that I've exclusively used it. But why would you use it over VBridger? and should you switch to it yourself? To answer you in short, uh, in most cases, no, don't switch. But it's actually a little bit more complicated than that. So let's talk about what VBridger and vitamins even are and why you might pick one over the other. If you're totally and completely confused with all of the jargon I've been using, let me give you an introduction on VTuber tracking and what these two apps even do. Typically, VTuber tracking goes something like this. You make face. Face turns into math. Math goes into VTuber model and VTuber make face. Your facial data can come from a webcam or a phone, but ever since we got the facial depth camera on iPhone 10 and beyond, we've had access to a new special kind of tracking, which is far more accurate and expressive. Because your facial depth information is tracked, you can get all these fancy things called AR kit parameters or blend shapes, and there's over 20 of them for just your mouth alone, some of which are even right or left side dependent. A good example of one of these is mouth funnel, which is effectively what you look like when you pog. On a webcam, Cam, an open mouth looks really similar to a funneled mouth, but if you have depth information, it's very apparent that there's a difference because your lips protrude when you're making this expression. Now, if you've ever rigged a live 2D model, you know that mouths are usually on, at minimum, a 3x3 three three grid of happy to sad and open to closed. That's two parameters, mouth form and mouth open, and a 3x3 three three grid of those adds nine keyforms. So adding 20 more parameters on top of that for all of those depth discrepancies is not ideal and asking for compatibility trouble. The solution is VBridger. VBridger is very smart because it takes those 20 parameters from ARKit and combines them into about five or so mouth parameters instead. So rather than having left and right side parameters, those are combined into an average. And then those left and right side combined parameters are further combined with other parameters for simplicity purposes, and that makes rigging way easier. But what people don't realize is that the math to combine those parameters isn't actually unique to VBridger, it's just math after all, and any app that can read ARKit information can perform that same combination of parameters. Enter vitamins. Vitamins can also get your tracking information from your iOS device and combine parameters in the same way that VBridger does, but there are some major differences between vitamins and VBridger. First of all, the price. Vitamins is available at the the low, low cost of zero dollars. It's absolutely free. And contrarily, VBridger costs ten dollars, but if you ever want to adjust those default math expressions, you have to pay an additional twenty dollar DLC fee to have access to the editor. Vitamins is also lighter on your system. Here I am running my model tracking for both apps, and you can see just how much more resource intensive VBridger is. In some situations, the difference is negligible, but on my old system, saving a few percentage points of CPU performance was actually really Really important. But perhaps the most important part, to me anyhow, is that while VBridger has an Excel-like math system, Vitamins is completely code-based, specifically JavaScript, which gives a little more wiggle room in terms of logic and complexity. It also gives you stuff like date and time, which I love having access to for features on my model like my built-in clocks. So what are the downsides if Vitamins seems so powerful and so awesome? Well, for one, Vitamins is pretty much abandonware at this point, as it hasn't been updated since 2023. And VBridger, on the other hand, does receive updates, albeit slow, but it is a very small team. And because of that, massive updates can't be expected to come out consistently. Bug fixes will come through every now and then, and the Discord is very active with troubleshooting. Contrarily, Vitamins has a completely dead Discord, and any bugs that you deal with will almost certainly never be fixed. Both apps have pretty good documentation in terms of connectivity and functions, though I would argue that Vitamins has better documentation
information for their parameter math system. But again, just because there's more to read on their website does not mean there's more to hear from in terms of community input, which vBridger excels with by far. There's even an official series of tutorials for you to rig your model for vBridger. So if you're thinking about using vitamins for your tracking app, here are some questions to consider, and I won't be reading these out since they're so specific, but it kind of just boils down to, do you really need JavaScript? Do you have no fucking money? Or do you want a clock? Like, is your model even rigged for AR kit? And if you answered yes to those questions, are you willing to take this app on with basically no help and no updates? With those things considered, if you still said yes, then I think you'll enjoy vitamins, or should at the very least check it out for fun. If you're considering switching from vBridger to vitamins though, my first advice would probably be don't. vBridger has much more support and potential for updates for you to dump your current setup and migrate over. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. But if you do want to check it out, there are vBridger presets for vitamins out there, like this one by Marusue. Or Marusayu? It's spelled differently on different websites, but this is the creator of Nyarupad, which is a well-renowned plugin, and I'll leave a link to that preset down in the description. All things considered, if you want to try out vitamins, let's get you set up. Download the app on Steam and go ahead and run it, and then open VTube Studio. Double-click and navigate to VTube Studio, and then under that first settings tab, scroll to your API settings and be sure to toggle on your API. And if you've been using vBridger, this is probably already set up for you. Then in your vitamins app, click this second dot here, make sure that your port is is correct and connect to VTube Studio. You should receive a prompt in VTube Studio where Vitamins requests API access, so hit OK and connect them. The dot should turn green and signify the connection. Next up, we connect our phone. You'll need your phone's IP address, which you can get from your Wi-Fi settings. To find it, select your Wi-Fi and scroll down to your IPv4. Select that first dot in Vitamins and type your IPv4 in this box here. And then open your VTube Studio mobile app, double tap, and select your settings. Under the first tab, scroll to the bottom and toggle on your third-party clients toggle. And then in Vitamins, click connect. And your model should now be linked and running data between the two apps. If it looks weird, it's probably because your parameters aren't set up yet. And as you can see, we've got quite the list of AR kit blend shapes and parameters on the default settings. When you first open vitamins, this parameter list here is going to be your default Live 2D parameter list. And I would recommend starting with the same, though if you want to import a new parameter list, like the vBridger settings I mentioned prior, you can download that file, go to your scripts manager, open your scripts folder, and drop it in here. And then you should be able to select it from this list and load it in. If you want to make a new one from scratch, you can add it in here. And once a script is made, you can edit the title and description here. I'll just be using the Live2D default script to start to show you how you can add parameters in and calibrate your model. If you want to add in new parameters, click the plus button at the bottom and then open up the parameter. Name that parameter and set its bounds and then define its value. In most cases, it's just going to be the exact definition of the blend shape, although we'll discuss math in a moment. For example, let's add in mouth funnel to the default and set the value from zero to one with a default of zero and set that that output to mouth funnel, which is just a direct input from that blend shape information. Within VTube Studio, navigate to your model settings and add a new tracking parameter, name it, and set your new mouth funnel parameter for the input. And then for the output, set it to your model's mouth funnel output. And again, you won't have a mouth funnel output if your model is not rigged for it, so your model really does have to be rigged for AR kit for this to work. But now you should have a functional mouth funnel parameter. And if it's not looking how you want, you can always add math here to adjust it or write a script to fit your needs, which like I said, I will cover in a bit. You can repeat this process for any number of parameters that you need, just add them in vitamins, configure them, then add them in VTube Studio, and link the two up. After doing your first parameter, I recommend saving this as a new vitamins preset using this button here. Since this starting file is a default, you cannot overwrite it, so if you load off of this for some reason without saving, you will lose all of your progress. With your new preset, saved and named, you can continue to work and add any new parameters that you need, but this way you get to maintain those initial parameters that are already set up for you without having to add them in manually yourself. Once your parameters have been added and linked in VTube Studio, you can calibrate the model to your needs. First, do your regular calibration for zero point by pressing this button here and then staring directly into the void or your camera. Then you need to customize your individual parameters. Each of these can be individually opened and adjusted to scale with your face. Just click on one to open it up. A preview of the actual motion will be displayed and yeah, uh, wow, oh, he 
looks really awesome. But you will calibrate this similar to VTube Studio, so express this face shape to the absolute furthest that you can. And if the value maximum that you're seeing is less than the default value maximum, which is usually one, then you should click this bracket here and it will scale it down to your face. And now when you make that expression, you should be able to hit that maximum value since it's been scaled up or down depending on your needs. You should do this for every blend shape to get the most out of your tracking. If you ever need to reference what exactly a parameter is doing, you can open this button here and manually set values yourself and then hit the check mark. And this lets you test how parameters interact or get a vibe check for what your maximums should look like. It functions kind of like a freeze frame or even like the expression creator menu within VTube Studio. And when you're done, you can just hit X to close it. Let's go over more UI and advanced parameter stuff though. These parameters are all having data transmitted as long as this button here is purple. And if you want to toggle off that transmission for any reason, you can click it to turn it off temporarily. To delete a parameter, click the trash can twice, or you can also cancel the deletion by uh, clicking the back arrow. Yeah, that makes sense. The plus button will open up your math here. And in most cases, these will be direct from ARKit parameters and that's it. But you can also add in simple math here, like adding additional parameters or numerical values. And this section is really similar to vBridger's math section. If you want something more complex, you can click on the programming icon to access your coding. And because this is JS based, you can look up JavaScript documentation to add in whatever you see fit. This can be complex if then statements, including references to other variables or storing new variables. And as mentioned prior, there's decent documentation on how to use this feature in the vitamins GitHub page. Let's actually do some examples of math and programming though, since I know this is the scary and confusing part for most people. First, let's just mess around a bit in math mode. If we take a value and add an asterisk with a two next to it, our value will now be multiplied by two. And if we do a slash instead, divided by two. We can also add and subtract values as well. You can also do math including blend shape values. For example, let's just throw add brow interrupt on there and it'll add the value for brow interrupt at that point into this math equation. So this is really great for combining parameters easy, which is what vBridger does to make parameters more simplified and easier on the rig artist. You can even copy paste the default math for vBridger into vitamins and it should work pretty much the same. Next, let's try referencing a parameter that isn't from this list and is instead from VTube Studio's default parameter list. For example, the mic input parameters like voice frequency and voice volume. You can use vPlugin to grab these values. And if you create a custom parameter, you can reference those as well. You can also reference your own variables within vitamins. So for example, if I make a dummy variable and set it to five, I can then reference that variable by using ref and a period before the variable name. Not that you'd ever want to make a variable to store five because you could just like add five, but I'm just trying to get a point across here, okay? Let's also try adding date and time. And there's an example for date and time in the documentation, so let's just go over that. Date is built in as a constructor in JavaScript, so we can just make a new date and then add the associated method for the time component that we want. So we could get something like the year, the month, the day of the week, hours, time of day, stuff like that. You get the idea. And now let's try a programming example. And keep in mind, I'm not a programmer, so yeah. But I guess that's positive, right? Because if I can do it, then that means surely you can too. So if I wanted to say, trigger my star eyes expression when I see something cool, to set this up, we need to make a parameter like normal. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new parameter in vitamins, name it star eyes, set the range, just default it to zero for the moment. And then in VTube Studio, I'll make a new parameter, make the input our star eyes parameter from vitamins and then set the output to our star eyes expression that is rigged into the model. So let's think about this for a second. If I want to look excited and have star eyes, what expression would I be making to trigger this? Probably like having my eyebrows up and maybe I would be pogging or something. So we can correlate this to brow outer up and maybe jaw open or maybe mouth funnel. Let's open our math up first. We can first set it to zero and it should be off. And then we can set it to one as well and make sure that the parameter is functional. And it appears to be good. So let's go ahead and start adjusting things in the programming section. We'll set an empty variable that will serve as sort of like a yes, no answer for whether or not the toggle should go off. The format for this is going to be let variable name equal. And we're just going to initiate this with zero. Now we're going to want to initiate the actual check itself. And if statements follow this format in JS, so let's start there. 
inside the parentheses, this is going to be what we are checking and we wanna check if our brows are up. So let's type if brow outer up right equals one. That will check only the right brow though. So let's change it to an average between the left and right. So we will add them together and divide by two and be sure to put them inside of parentheses together because of order of operations. And this looks really ugly. So I will set it to a variable instead and the value will be stored for reference. So if you remember the format, it's going to be let variable name equal. And instead of using this brow outer right thing here inside of these parentheses, we can move it up here and declare it as a variable. And then we can replace that long ass bullshit with the variable name instead. Inside of these brackets, this is going to be what happens if that check passes. So if the brows are up, we want the expression to go off and we can make our variable result set equal to one and then return that result. And now let's test it out by bringing our brows up. And it works, but it works every single time that you lift your eyebrows up and we actually wanna add in another expression check. So we have a more exact set of conditions to be met before the expression will go off. And I think mouth funnel is a good value to check because usually when you're excited about something, you pog. I mean, it just makes sense. So let's also check if mouth funnel is, let's say over 0.5. And we can just do that by adding in another if statement within this if statement. And we'll move that variable adjustment from zero to one inside of that second statement. So it only adjusts if both of these things are true. And now if we pog and raise our eyebrows, we get our new expression, but raising our brows only does not trigger it anymore. It should be noted that when you try to make new code like this, you can always optimize it. We could change this double if statement into a single if statement and check both parameters at once. With coding, there's not always a correct answer, but there is almost always an optimized answer. So if you're looking to achieve something in particular, just reference the developer doc or visit some coding help websites. I hope this helps you demystify vitamins and give it a try if you've been on the fence about it. While I wouldn't say it's a complete V-Bridger replacement, it's certainly got its place and I currently prefer its versatility over vBridger at the moment. Overall, I'd say Vitamins is great for enthusiasts, especially if you do your own model rigging and have complete control over the model export and also know what you're doing with the parameter setup. Not to mention the simplicity of vBridger's rigging style when compared to the lawless world of Vitamins. Though again, you can use vBridger's rig style and math equations with Vitamins as well. And vBridger's community support is unmatched because uh, yeah, there have been three messages in the Vitamins Discord since I I said something in uh looks at watch may of 2025 tldr ghost town navigated only by cowboys running from the law versus like bustling city with a government and clean water and health care that being said though ain't nothing wrong with being a cowboy yeah. hopefully we'll get a more robust vbridger editor in the future or access to features like the date and time feature that we have in vitamins but let me know down in the comments which ar kit app you use for tracking and why you use it i'm genuinely curious to know what everybody's using but thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one bye